Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up. So yes, my wrap ups usually get quite long. We're gonna try, oh my fringe is crazy. We're gonna try not to make it too long in this video but probably be at least 40 minutes so <laughs> go and grab yourself a cup of tea or a snack and then come back and get cozy and I can tell you about all the books I read in January. So the first book that I read was the audiobook for Seven Devils, which is by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. And in this one, we're kind of following this um, crew of a ship. So basically at the start, we're kind of following these two main characters, one who is sort of a hidden princess, like she was a princess, but she's kind of now become part of the rebellion and she's sort of... Um, known as Eris and she's like this quite famous rebel commander but she's like hiding the fact that she's a princess and then also we're following Chloe and she sort of knows about Eris but she sort of and is angry with her and it's sort of <laughs> um a bit of beef there but they basically they have to work together to go and try and um investigate what happened to this like ship but there they discover these other three characters um called I think Nyx, Ariadne and then there's a little girl whose name I can't remember, but I really liked her. Um, Princess Discordia, who was also Eris, her like brother is kind of going to like sabotage this treaty and then they have to try and stop that sabotage. <laughs> so it's a bit complicated, but it's I feel like it's a really good sort of beginner sci-fi, especially if you're yeah looking to get into sci-fi. It kind of I feel like it also toes the line a bit between YA and adult. Um it, yeah because I feel like the character ages are a bit older but it, it feels kind of I don't know there's just why sci-fi sometimes has this feel to it <laughs> and this one kind of has a bit of that feel and it's it's yeah it's just a really fun ride like the characters they kind of are very lovable I think I gave it 3.75 stars yeah um and there's a bit of a sapphic romance as well which is cool um and yeah the three so like Ariadne she's this like courtesan and she sort of has these weird powers that she's she kind of hides but then they get discovered and she, yeah so she's great and then her like budding relationship with Chloe is really cute but um yeah she's probably my favorite character and then there's also the little girl whose name I cannot remember it's eluding me but she's like been brought up almost in this type almost cult type thing or like well it's not a cult because there's only one of her but she's been like brought up by this the one who's this kind of AI type and they like influence people's minds and stuff and then she's kind of been brought up with that but she's escaping and that's another really good storyline so yeah it's a really enjoyable book I feel like there were some flaws like the pacing maybe was a bit weird I don't know I feel like it was longer than it needed to be but also in some ways short than it needed to be I don't know I feel like there was more that could have like been explored but also there was bits where it was just a bit like Oh, we're just following along. And I feel like the characters weren't, like, I like the characters, but they weren't, like, these are now my babies <laughs> type characters, um, if that makes sense. And the audiobook narration was good. The, the woman, I think, she had a Scottish accent, which was kind of cool. The next I read A Desolation Called Peace, which I gave, well, I think I've written 4.5 in my book, but it's probably more like 5. Like, I rounded it up to 5. So I guess we could call it 4.75 stars. And I love this one so much. So it's the sequel to A Memory Called Empire. And basically, in A Memory of Empire, we're following Mehi, who is travelling to this text colony empire, where she's trying to investigate what happened to her previous ambassador, because he's, like, mysteriously died. Um, and, yeah, so Mehi's going to be the new ambassador. And when she's there in the, kind of, text colony, the main city, there's, like, a lot of political strife going on, and there's this, kind of, almost rebellion-type coup thing boiling up, <laughs> or brewing, and... <laughs> I don't get my words mixed up um and yeah and basically Mahi is kind of taken in by three seagrass who's like a guide to the city and she sort of is exploring that and then she also has a friend called Twelve Zayla and they sort of become this little trio of investigators <laughs> um and yeah there's various like political figures and there's a lot of kind of what's happened with the previous ambassador Mahi's um like predecessor and his involvement in the politics of Tex Kwani. So yeah, it's really good. And then the second one, A Desolation Called Peace, I loved even more because I feel like, so Memory Called Empire is quite like dense and just takes a little while to get into and there's so much like new kind of culture and new words and stuff to explore. But then in The Desolation Called Peace, you're already kind of into it and you get this, some of the same characters, so like Mahit was still following and Three Seagrass and their relationship development in A Desolation is so good. I loved it so much. Oh, 
just oh uh, yeah i love them and then we're also following some extra pov so we have nine hibiscus who's like this um a sort of military commander thing and they're in charge of the fleet at the like edge of the of the kind of where the like not the galaxy but like at the edge of the kind of settled Texarkana empire and there the fleet is kind of interacting with these like almost like a first contact with these like strange aliens so nine hibiscus is trying to manage that and yeah she's a really good character as well and we're also following so yeah and the heat um, and three seagrass travel to nine hibiscus is like fleet and and there they sort of end up with the first contact things and it's, it's just so good and also we're also following back on text honey the little kid ate antidote and and he's like he's so good as well i mean i don't always love like i i tend to like like kid povs but his is just it's so good and um, so yeah i really enjoyed that one as you can <laughs> probably tell i don't know just i I just love it like the writing is so beautiful and I feel like it just captures you in that um it captures you in the story and it just it makes you feel so like happy but also it's, it's some quite like serious themes and stuff and, and the politics is just so well kind of woven it's like this intricate web and there's also the politics on the cell station which is where Mahi is from and also just the kind of thing like Mahi is kind of She's enamoured by this colonising empire, almost like Tech Connie, and just her kind of coming to terms with that. And also the kind of the relationship friction, because Three Seagrass will always kind of see Mahi as like, not lesser, but like not as civilised in a way. And it is really interesting. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> it was probably my favourite book that I read in the month, I would say. I'm just looking at what else I read. Um yeah okay so then next we have days of blood and starlight which i have i have physically um yes oh i forgot to mention the desolation copies was an arc but i think it comes out in march and um, i already pre-ordered the physical copy although i'm a bit worried because i feel like it's going to be glossy and i like matte covers so hopefully it's matte but i feel like i've seen the empire memory called empire ones and they're like glossy but i have a memory called empire in paperback so We'll see, but yeah. So I read Days of Blood and Starlight, and this was for the Dosaba Long, um, which is a read along I'm co-hosting, and it's mainly hosted by Maddie from Book Browsing Vlog, who is lovely and amazing. And they also have Spoops India and Row, um, yeah. And I'll try and link all of them in the description. But I enjoyed this one. I think I gave it four stars. Yeah, and um, this one kind of expanding on what happened in um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, <laughs> and yeah. So you're following Karu, who's this kind of um, in the first book she like collects teeth for her like mysterious family and she's also an art student in Prague and she comes across this like angel who is kind of mysterious and yeah just sort of events about the past kind of unfold and I feel like that was a very poor description <laughs> um, and then in this one they're kind of there's sort of two sides of a war almost and you're seeing both sides so you're seeing the kind of rebellion which is Karu is kind of part of and but there's kind of on both sides of the war there's some like shady characters <laughs> like i feel like when i read it you, i definitely feel like the seraphim who are kind of the angels they definitely seem like the bad guys but then some other seraphim like you root for i mean i'm not so the love interest akiva he's a seraphim i'm not the biggest fan of akiva <laughs> um but i feel like yeah some other seraphim you do like um and but then yeah within the kind of rebellion the chimera who are like creatures um some of them you kind of root for them overall like because kind of Karu is part of them but like some of them are absolute twats <laughs> like Thiago oh I hate him but yeah so in seeing this book we kind of Karu is sort of struggling to find her place in like the rebellion among the chimera and she sort of has a place but like she wants almost more and like she feels like they're going about things in the wrong way so it's really interesting and there's another character who we meet in this book called Ziri who I love Ziri so much um yeah but I've, and the writing is very like lyrical in these books I, I feel like this one I did have to push myself to read it a little bit just because like I feel like it's kind of slow in a way but like I was wanting to read other things I think while I was reading this I don't know if that's just because the other books I was reading were really good or whether this one was just kind of a bit it just felt a little bit laborious to get through um but I do I do like um 
this series and I feel like it's like a solid kind of four star series for me like and especially kind of reflecting back on it you can kind of see the things and I think this is a good so I would say this is probably a YA series but I feel like it's a good kind of transition series because it does have kind of quite a wide scope and you are sort of exploring it's very like it's a quite it's two-sided war I would say so it's not too like complicated because <laughs> a lot of fantasy you have like about 10 different sides and it's all a bit complicated so it's still kind of a bit simple but also you do get the kind of expansive one so it is good and um, so yeah so that's that one next i read artemis by andy weir and i read this on audio and i gave this one 4.5 stars because i actually really enjoyed it like and then i went on goodreads and it's like has such a low rating and so many people hate it and loads of people were saying it's sexist which i can kind of see but actually <laughs> i sort of enjoyed it anyway i feel like i like rant on books for being sexist and then this one i'm like oops i enjoyed it um but yeah, so we're basically following Jazz and she's living on Artemis and she is like a smuggler. She's like a smuggler. So she'll, so Artemis is a city on the moon and she'll like smuggle in things for people. Um, and she's like kind of a, like a petty criminal, I would say. Um, and, but basically she gets recruited by this guy to try and sabotage these um, harvesters for this company because there's a company, I think it's, they make aluminium or silicon, something along those lines. And but the this other this Russian dude who's like hiring Jazz, she he wants to take over this like plant because they are producing this kind of new substance which is gonna make loads of money on Earth. So, so it sort of becomes this a bit conspiracy. And then like the people you find out the people who are running this like plant um are actually like the Brazilian mafia or something. And and it's just, it gets a bit crazy. And like Jazz gets involved in all of this and then she ends up like on the run in the city and like these mobsters are out to get her and it just gets a bit crazy. And then there's also this like police officer type guy in charge of Artemis and he sort of has this like banterous relationship with Jazz. And it, I just found it quite entertaining. And um, it's quite short and I don't feel like it's as good as The Martian, but I just had such a good time. Um, yeah and then i feel like i read the reviews and i was like oh maybe it wasn't that good but, but i guess i'm trashy so <laughs> i liked it um yeah it's just quite a fun story like almost like a heist type thing um yeah and i feel like jazz is very um she's very like not living up to her potential <laughs> um and i feel like she's she has quite a crude sense of humor which i feel like maybe puts a lot of people off um but I guess I just, I think I have an immature sense of humour, so I think I found that funny. <laughs> and after that I read The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nigivo. And this is an arc, and I feel like I have relatively mixed feelings on this one. So I gave it four stars because I feel like what Nigivo was trying to achieve, she achieved really well. And her writing is stunning, and like, I have so much respect for her as an author, and like, I will read anything she writes. But I feel like the floor of this book for me <laughs> was the Great Gatsby aspect of the retelling. Like... I just was not interested in the story. Well, I know, so I did like Jordan, who is kind of, so it's a great Gatsby retelling and it's told from the POV of Jordan Baker, who I think is in the original book. And she's sort of this um, like socialite, I guess. And she's sort of almost on the kind of edges of the kind of whole Gatsby, Daisy type drama. But I feel like we got a lot of focus in this book on the Gatsby and Daisy like drama. And I just, I didn't care for that. <laughs> like it was just, uh, they're meh. Um, Daisy was such a frustrating character. I really didn't like her. And I feel like Jordan just could have done so much better with like her friends. And, and I, I liked Jordan and Nick, they were cute. But yeah, Gatsby and Daisy were just, and, and Daisy's husband, whatever he's called, Tom. Yeah, I just didn't like that whole side of the storyline so I feel like I would have liked it more if it just kind of been like Jordan's story I guess and um, because her storyline was really interesting and there were some really interesting like themes of sort of especially sort of the like racial inequalities in the 1920s and the um is it the Manchester Act and like because Jordan I think is um I believe she's Chinese or at least half Chinese and uh, side of things was really interesting but then yeah just <laughs> Yeah, Gatsby and Daisy, but yeah, yeah, Gatsby and Daisy were just there. Um, so I feel like if you like The Great Spot Gatsby, this is a really, really good retelling, and it's so atmospheric, and you really feel like you're kind of in the 1920s. Here she is. She's, she, I think she's a bit too playful to be hugged. Um, oh, are you cutie? Okay, she's off. Um, so yes, so we're talking about The Chosen, The Beautiful. 
so yeah so I really like some aspects but then some others I feel like could have been stronger but I feel like that is not Nikki Bo's fault almost because it was the source material that she was working with so I feel like she did a really good job of what she was trying to do is that my thoughts on that basically and also I didn't feel like the magical elements were that well explored I feel like that was kind of sort of it was sort of just there um and you just had to kind of accept it I think I maybe would have liked it slightly more like magical but that was just personal preference I guess it did read very much kind of like a classic almost so yeah so a shadow of what was lost and I read this for Aaron's book club so books and busy book club oh no her channel is booked and busy and the book club is a busy bee book club um so this is a really fun to buddy read and I think the live show is on her channel if you wanted to watch more thoughts on the what we thought of this and I feel like it's a really hard book to explain <laughs> um so it's basically there are these three like teenagers in this like magical school type thing so you have the gifted who are like the magical people and it's a school for the gifted but the gifted are very kind of looked down on by society and they have all these tenants which are like rules that they have to um swear by basically and it's like you can't use magic to hurt other people and you can't use magic for this and you can't use magic for that basically like that kind of thing and then but then one day um davian who's the main character and his um my best friend whose name i can't remember where something where yeah where and um or oh, we're I'm not quite sure which one um and they sort of end up getting sent away type thing um because Davian has these like all these secrets surrounding him and then but so the evening after they're gone the school then gets massacred and the only survivor is Asher who is Davian and Wu's friend and Asher sort of ends up becoming a shadow which is like a I don't know kind of a gifted like that's been made almost evil or like they've had their powers taken away and the it is a bit like fantasy type thing <laughs> um, it's hard for me to explain so so then you're basically following those three and their kind of journeys and what they go through and it's quite a tr oh, like it's a fairly traveling book and just like finding the secrets of the kind of gifted and there's these things called the argus who are like these kind of magical people who could like see into the future and the past and um the kind of rediscovering the Argus and like maybe the Argus are kind of being reborn and that kind of thing and also there's another character called Caden who I love he's probably my favorite character um he's so like he's so funny um and yeah him and he has quite a mysterious past as well because basically when they find him he like can't remember anything um and so he's trying to like discover what happened to him uh, yeah it's just a very epic and I feel like it felt very nostalgic like it was like reading a kind of classic fantasy and it's kind of it just it's so easy to read I feel like if you like Sanderson then this has a kind of similar writing style like it's it's not dense it's just it's really easy to like fly through and you can't make great care for the characters and there's also some quite cool plot twists and um, like there's a lot of playing with time which is kind of cool and yeah so I'm really excited to see where the series goes I bought myself the other two books <laughs> in the series because I just I want to carry on and I feel like it's a really kind of solid I'm just spine's a bit bent but I feel like it's a really solid like fantasy series and a good start to a new fantasy series and yeah so that's that one it's an arc of a ruthless lady's guide to wizardry and what did I give this one and I give this one four stars this one was really fun it's kind of like a historical type story <laughs> and we're basically following the main character Del and she is like she's such a character she's so funny and she's sort of living like quite downtrodden and she doesn't have much money so she like hires herself out to this um lady who's like looking for bodyguards kind of to, like transport her from where she is to her fiance because she's had all these assassination attempts against her against her oh we got Maisie here she's back <laughs> um and yeah so she then joins this like group of bodyguards and they have to be women bodyguards I can't quite remember the reason for it but they're all women anyway and um and then and then when she's involved in this like bodyguarding and there's another character who's like oh she's so funny she's like half troll I think and she's like the love interest because it's a sapphic relationship and um she's like this kind of posh she's like royalty almost and then the kind of relationship with Del is so funny and like Del doesn't feel like she's worthy but oh it's so cute and then it sort of becomes this really like big conspiracy and there's this weird like drug on the loose and that's causing like chaos and then they have to try and investigate what's happening 
and it just sort of escalates like what I thought would be the plot of the book is only like the first kind of 30% and then it becomes this really cool like I don't know almost criminal drama and it's, it's really good so yeah I really enjoyed that and we'll just get Maisie no don't go under there she's here hey hello again oh she's not in a cuddly mood she's in a crazy mood she's always in a crazy mood but <laughs> yeah so that was really fun and i really like the sort of like historical type romance kind of but like really fun and there was like a bit of elements of magic as well which was cool and um, yeah so that was fun and then i read mexican gothic which i read an audio and i gave this one 4.5 stars because i'd been wanting to read some kind of um having my toes eaten <laughs> i was been wanting to read some kind of like gothic type books and um, and this one was really good i really enjoyed it and is so like I don't feel like I get scared really but I just really enjoyed it. like the last bit got really weird and like very intense things are happening like <laughs> some other ugh. um and I always love it when there's like this haunted house and there's sort of a reason why the house is haunted and you like get the backstory and I feel like this book did that really well and like the kind of oh look there she is <laughs> and the like creepy sort of aspect to um the house and like things that were happening there and that was just so cool and um, so basically following Naomi and she goes to this house called High Place which is where her cousin called Catalina has been married to this guy called Virgil Doyle and Catalina is sort of going mad and she's been sending these strange letters to like Naomi and her father so Naomi's father sends Naomi to go and investigate investigate what's happening to her so Naomi goes to this house and then Naomi kind of then ends up like embroiled in the mysteries of the house and this house is like very haunted and the Doyles are this very like strange I, uh, maybe strange is the right word like family and they're sort of I think they're white and they're sort of colonized almost like there's a lot of talk around like colonization and eugenics as well um because the, the like main Doyle guy is it Howard? I think it's Howard. And he's like very like inferior, superior genes and stuff. And there's kind of a reason like why he thinks that way and like the cause. <laughs> she's in there. I don't know if you can see she's like behind the book. So <laughs> you're gonna have a nap. What are you doing? <laughs> she's there. You can see her. Um so yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was really good. I thought I dealt with some really good things. And then I really liked the sort of direction the story went in. Um, like I said, I like the kind of explanations, the like haunting. And so that was really cool. Um, yeah. And I sort of, I quite liked the way it ended as well. Because I was a bit worried it was going to be like a certain ending. But it wasn't, so that was good. <laughs> I read We Ride the Storm by I'll keep Maisie in the camera. <laughs> we Ride the Storm. We'll see if she can get out. Oh, she did. Um, but it's impressive. We Ride the Storm and We Lie with Death by Devin Manson. So We Ride the Storm, I, I really enjoyed actually. I gave four stars or maybe 3.75 stars. Um, I feel like it was a solid start to a fantasy series. Um, it's kind of, the only thing I will say is it's like Asian inspired fantasy and I think it's written by a white woman. So I guess that's a bit something to be aware of. Um, but yeah, we're following three main characters. So I think she wants to be let out. <laughs> um, Ra... Cassandra and Miko and so Miko is the daughter of the kind of empress and the emperor and but she's not actually the biological child of the emperor she is of the empress but they're like father so Miko and her um twin <laughs> I had to think of the word then um are the children actually of this like old powerful general that was overthrown by the current emperor but the wife, so the empress, she, who's, they are her actual children. She sort of married the new emperor and now they're sort of honorary thing. But then like something happens and the Takana, her, Miko's twin, um, is killed. And this sort of sets off this big war. So then Cassandra is this assassin and she's sort of involved also in the story somehow, which I won't say, but it's interesting. And she's sort of hired to kill this um dom leo billis who's from a different country and he's sort of going to like engaged or married to miko um so cassandra's hired to kill him on the way so that's kind of tied in there and then ra is one of the um levanti who are like the plains people i would say um so he's kind of they're quite like 
well, he's kind of a pacifist, I would say, but the pe his people are kind of being recruited into the war. So it's kind of following that. Um, and yeah, and then the second one, We Lie With Death, which I read an arc of, <laughs> Macy's so funny, but it's now out. And I didn't, I think I gave that one three stars because I didn't like that much. I feel like it really suffered from mid, um, what's it called? Yeah, middle book syndrome, second book syndrome. It just, not a lot happened. There was quite a lot of traveling. I feel like I probably will still read the last book because I feel like the ending sort of did set up the last book quite interesting. But I feel like in the second book, the only character I really was interested in and the story was um, Cassandra. And also she kind of interacted with the kind of empress the main empress from the first book which was really interesting and I liked their dynamic and I liked finding out more about the kind of magic of the world through that because they kind of have these like the way the magic works it's kind of these almost like passengers in people and like they can have more than one soul in the body and then like share the soul in it it's quite interesting and um, but then the other POVs weren't that interesting and there was a new POV as well who I didn't really like I don't feel like she added much to the story so yeah, that was a bit of a struggle to get through. I feel like it was a lot longer than it needed to be. After that, I read The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, and this is another arc. Um, oh, she's, I heard her jumping up, but I don't know where she is. She's down there. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed this one. I don't feel like I loved it quite as much as I was expecting to. I think I gave it four stars, because I feel like this was another one that was just, not slow, because I tend to like like slow, politically driven books. And this book is very like politically driven. But I feel like there was just something about it which I didn't quite love. I know I know what it was. It was the relationship. Like I didn't, because it's a sapphic relationship as well. I thought I was going to love it. And it's like almost like Princess and the Bodyguard as well. <laughs> but I just, I didn't know. I didn't see the chemistry and I didn't see the like, um, why they would <laughs> care for each other. Or like, they didn't seem to care for each other, but then suddenly they were like, in love. and I, I don't know, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But I did love the like political setup of the world and the kind of, the plot, the way it unfolded and like the kind of drama with like terrain and she sort of, she gets like kidnapped by the rebels and then she's sort of recruited to the rebels, but she's also spying on the rebels for the princess Luca and it, is, it just gets a bit like convoluted and a bit, and then she like double, double crossing and it. it's all a bit like, it, um yeah and terrain's very much fighting for like her kind of people not people but like the sands who are like the kind of bottom dregs of the military but she's kind of trying to stand up for them and yeah and then Luca is trying to prove herself as a leader because she wants to be queen and she's trying to like prove herself to her uncle that she can like rule the city and like control this rebellion which is happening in the city um so yeah so that's interesting and I feel like they were interesting like characters to follow separately but like I didn't like them together <laughs> so yeah that was kind of my thoughts on that one um and yeah the setting was really good and I really enjoyed the writing like it's very kind of it's that kind of writing which like isn't super like flowery and purpley but it's like but it captures you in the atmosphere really well but it's and it's not super simple it's like the perfect middle ground and I feel like I tend to like those kind of books and uh, next I read The Master of Gin or Any Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. And this is another one of my favourite books that I read in the month. I gave this one five stars as well. And this is um, another book in the like Fatma El Shari series. I feel like that's how you say her name. But the other two are Dead Gin in Cairo and oh, The Haunting of Tramcar 15. Um, and this is a really good series. But A Master of Gin is the first full length novel because the other two are quite short novellas. But this one's full length and it's so good. Like it's just so entertaining and so like the magic and the atmosphere is just so good so the magic is it's set in this like alternate Cairo I would say it's kind of steampunky and then there's also magic and um, like happening and like magical creatures and like the mythology I love like you get the gin and the and and it reminded it was making me like nostalgic for the David Bad series because some of the same sort of um like I guess mythological sort of characters and like um objects and things are involved because like there's a big um storyline with Suleiman seal which also plays a big role in the david bad series and also the crocodile god sobek we see it as well in the in master of jinn and it's really good um so basically at the start of the book this um brotherhood thing which is dedicated to this historical figure called al algis algis and they all get murdered by this um like imposter claiming to be the like recoming of al -Jahiz and so Fatma who is like this um sort of investigator with the like ministry of special like magic and special creatures and stuff she has to come and investigate what's happened and so it's basically like a murder mystery and they're also trying to find out what's 
going on with this imposter guy um because like things keep happening around the city and he's sort of riling up the population um and then Fatma also has this new assistant called Hidia and they're like they're relationship is so cute it's like the kind of grumpy mentor and like wide-eyed apprentice which is just it's so much fun and then Fatima also has a girlfriend City and City is also such a great character she's like so kind of like flirty and like saucy and <laughs> and she also has some kind of hidden secrets to her and she's sort of quite like flighty like she'll she'll be around for a bit and then she'll sort of disappear so I just knocked off my <laughs> my book with my thingies on it's upside down yeah and then like Fatma, Siti and Hadia all form this like little trio and they're like investigating and oh it's so good and like the um the like villain is just very like sh almost like Sherlock Holmes type storyline I've never even read any Sherlock Holmes but I just feel like it's that kind of thing the sort of investigations and the like the uncovering and like the villain is like very sort of almost like a like a stereotypical villain but it's done in such like a good way and like it's kind of historical and like the murder mystery and it. it was just so much fun i really highly recommend it um and i don't feel like you have to have read the first two like novellas to read it although you can and they are good like especially your dead and Kara, i really like um but yeah no it's a really good series and uh, i just love that book um so yeah and after that i read hall of smoke by ml long i think and this is like a kind of norse mythology based book and i feel like i gave this one 3.7 or uh, 3.5 stars probably rounded up to four though um because i did enjoy it I, but i feel like it's just quite like it's quite slow and meandery um i'm basically following hesse who is this like prince pri prince <laughs> priestess of Yang and Yang is like this goddess of war and you have these Yangji um, priestesses who are like warrior priestesses basically and but at the start of the book the kind of village where the Yangji are they all sort of get murdered I think murdered or killed or yeah um, and Hester's like the only one who survives except from this other character called Sixnit and her baby um, and then so Hester like vows to protect them and um, but then basically Hester sort of ends up embroiled in this like war between the gods because they're kind of warring the old gods versus the new gods and the six knit and her child sort of get taken away but she's trying to like protect them and and the child is kind of maybe an element of this prophecy and just the sort of there's a lot going on and there's a lot of like warring gods and like Hester sort of being like battered backwards and forth between these gods and like not knowing who to trust and like not knowing who's on what side and it, it so it's it's good and I really like this sort of Norse setting it was really cool and um, Hess is quite like a a driven protagonist as well she's quite like she's obviously grieving as well because like, at the start of the book she loses her like whole family like her husband and her um, cousin and like the whole village um so yeah so she's quite like raw I would say is a good way of describing her um and yeah some of the like the tension between her and the gods like there's one of the gods like I think it's the winter god or something and there's a bit of like sexual tension there <laughs> but then also her friendship that she makes with some of the other um like people who are involved in the war was kind of cute and just her kind of dealing with like she's sort of losing faith in Yang and Yangji and no Yang is the god um she's sort of losing faith and like re maybe realizing that her kind of like idol doesn't quite live up to expectations and like the actual true reason why the ANG priestesses exist and so it's very interesting especially if you like gods and mythology and that kind of thing um yeah it's it's just it's quite like a slow pace as well so but I feel like it's kind of enjoyable slow rather than like trawling slow so yeah that's that one I just feel like I didn't really like connect to any of the characters like super hard and that's why I didn't get a higher rating but it was still a really enjoyable read. This wrap up's actually going quite well because it's like 35 minutes and I only have three books left to talk about. <laughs> I didn't read quite as much in January as I normally do but I feel like yeah I feel like now the um my reading's gonna get down a little bit per month because studying hard for exams in June. <laughs> we read Fire by Kristen Kishore and I love Fire so much um yeah oh um it's such a great book like I loved Winterkeep which I read in December so I just wanted to reread Fire because that's my other favourite and I just love Fire is such like her character is such an inspiration and she's so she's so kind of 
strong but a very understated strong like she's very kind of quiet and she doesn't have any like supreme like fighting talent or anything she just uses her kind of inner strength and inner like resilience and inner sort of kindness as well she's a very kind protagonist and just and the way the world has kind of treated her she hasn't let that affect her and like the whole so everyone thinks she's a monster well she's so in the dells which is where it's set you have these like monsters who are kind of very colorful and they have powers like they can control people's thoughts and stuff and fire is a monster like a lady monster and her so her father was a monster called Kanzarel and I actually love Kanzarel he, he's a villain but he's he's dead in the book but he um yeah he's like um he was very like charming and influential on the court so he kind of the previous king called Max him and Kanzarel were like this pair and Kanzarel was very like influential on Max and like caused chaos in the kingdom but basically at the start of the book so Kanzarel and Max are both dead and Nash the, Nax's son is the new king but the kingdom is very unstable and Fire is basically trying to help them and um, like stabilize the kingdom and like investigate what's going on but yeah Fire is just and she's sort of the theme is like she's not her father and she's not this monster that she sometimes thinks she is and like overcoming that is just so beautiful and also so Nax's brother Brigan 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 I think it is um he's like the commander of the guard and him and fire have this like oh their relationship I love it so much just how much Brigan 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 <laughs> I can't say it how much Brigan cares about her and oh yeah so I love their relationship um but yeah just fire as a character she's such a standout character she's so fantastic and yeah the villain well so you have two kind of villains so you have Kanzarel who's kind of the villain in the past and his the consequences of his sort of actions um, and how also his treatment of fire because it's very complicated um and then also Lek who is the main villain in Graceling but in this one he's like a child um but he's still like causing chaos in the Dells in this book so yeah that's interesting um yeah it's just a really good series I love the Dells like the setting is so good and oh so I just highly recommend the whole Graceling series <laughs> basically is the message from that one um yeah Okay, and then I read The Fever King, which was our Chaos Rising book pick, and the live show for that is on Ruth's channel. So by the time you're seeing this, it will have happened, because <laughs> it's happening this evening, from when I'm filming now. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Yeah, and I I actually enjoyed this one. Like, the first time I read it, I think I gave it three stars, and then this time around, I gave it 3.5 stars. I feel like just knowing what I was expecting helped my enjoyment, because it's very, like, when you read a lot of like adult fantasy and stuff it's it's not that <laughs> um it's very like classic YA dystopian type thing and like it's very angsty like <laughs> if I had to describe this book in one word it would be angsty um and yeah it's just very kind of over the top and dramatic but I feel like I kind of embraced it <laughs> while I was reading it this time and so basically following Gnome who is he basically I, like awakens his powers in this fever wake and it's like a virus magic is like a virus and if you survive the virus then you have magical powers and gnome is basically a technopath so you can like control technology with his mind um and he sort of then gets when he once his powers are awakened he gets um like recruited to this level four which is kind of like a school a school type thing for these magical like teenagers and and is kind of controlled by this lahera guy who's like this powerful historical figure he's almost immortal but he's like the I think he was in charge of the Ministry of Defense at the moment but like there's a sort of almost a coup being plotted and it gets a bit convoluted and there's this little character Dar called Dara who is very like angsty also and he is sort of at first a bit at odds with Name but then they sort of grow closer and then also Name is trying to like stand up for the rights of the Atlanteans who are like so the the world is kind of like it's set in an alternate America I guess and it's kind of split into like different countries so like Atlantia I feel like is the south and then it's mainly set in like Carolina Carolina I, um and the Atlanteans are kind of seen as like refugees there and they're not treated very well so Gnome's kind of like because he is one of the Atlanteans he's trying to like stand up for them 
so yeah so there's a lot going on <laughs> um but i don't know i found it enjoyable i feel like the writing was quite solid Um, gnome as a character is a little bit insufferable <laughs> um and it doesn't really have a lot of brain cells <laughs> um but yeah so it's interesting and i enjoyed it it's not like a favorite book ever i feel like it's very kind of forgettable um but yeah it's still enjoyable read um, and then finally I read The Fives of Vengeance by Evan Winter which I actually really enjoyed I gave it four stars maybe like 4.25 and because I, I didn't like well I liked The Rage of Dragons but I didn't love it I feel like I gave it about three stars or maybe 3.5 like I feel like it was just it had a really solid foundation but there was just something kind of missing almost or like I know what was missing it was female characters <laughs> um, and Tao oh Tao <laughs> um, Tao just doesn't have a single thought <laughs> um and the first book is very much his kind of revenge story and Tao is extremely like focused on revenge and it's very like Tao centric and very like yeah it's just Tao and like he, he has his absolute blind as well like he just he can't make an intelligent decision to save his life which is true in the second book as well <laughs> There were so many times where I was like, Tao, what are you doing? Um, and then and in the second book as well, he starts recruiting other people to his stupidity, like Jabari. Oh. But I really enjoyed the second book, actually. I feel like a lot of my enjoyment, well, not a lot of it, but like the audiobook, I think, really helped with my enjoyment because the audiobook narrator is really good. Um, and also the, um, I liked how we got slightly less focused on Tao <laughs> like we get a lot of the queen so Siora um, and she is kind of her sister Essie is another kind of queen and at the end of the first book kind of they're, they're now like separated so um we're following kind of Siora's court and I really like that she has a visor called Naya who I really liked she's kind of a milk so I obviously liked her um, and, but then there was one point where I thought, so Naya has this child and, and she like tells Tao to look after the child for a bit. And I was like, oh no, who just gave Tao custody of a child? <laughs> um, but it was all right. I feel like she came back quite quickly. So Tao wasn't left alone with the child for too long. But um, kind of a story for revenge. Like Tao is still obsessed with revenge on this guy called Adili. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of you get a bit more to the story and we also get a bit of this healer i would have liked more because i feel like we didn't get a lot of her pov and obviously i love healer characters but like oh i felt for her so badly because all these like idiot men are, are just trying to like run into battle and there's this like scene where tao basically has this massive chunk of his leg like ripped off oh no no no, no. i think he's poisoned so his leg like stops working and this poison's spreading but he like refuses to have it cut out or amputated and he's just carrying on in this battle and the healer's like oh what are you doing you're gonna die like if this poison reaches your heart so then i think eventually she has to, like cut a big chunk out of his leg um and then stitch it back up but um just just tell why like if you just I sat down for like two minutes and had a little chunk cut out it would have been so much easier but yeah um <laughs> Tao is not good at making smart decisions but anyway um yeah no I, so I like the healer character and I like the kind of the politics and like the way things were going and like the ending was quite like interesting although the very end I think I must have missed in the book like the relevance of these other peoples <laughs> but so I was a bit like confused but that was okay. So really like other sort of characters of the like his scale type thing like Hadith and Udwak. I like them and their little oh their little relationship is so cute and oh Tao who's like the, Tao they are very good friends Solarin should be his name but um yeah no I really like them and like Hadith's kind of tempering of Tao like he's he's kind of almost like Tao's brain <laughs> so yeah no that was really good I gave it four stars I feel like it's still a bit too Tao centric to get five stars but the the world is really cool and I feel like there's a lot of parallels with kind of modern day racism and, and that kind of thing so I feel like it's really good sort of well and it's really nice to see like a new kind of culture explored in fantasy not just a medieval Europe <laughs> type setting so yeah that's really good um so yeah so that is all the books i read in january um i hope you enjoyed this wrap up it's not it's not an hour it's only 45 minutes so we're improving um but yeah let me know what your favorite book that you read in january mine was probably a desolation called peace or a master of Jin. um i would really love to know and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already 
and I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you next time.